Uh, this is what you're going to familiarize yourself with over the week. I'm in 05 data. And so here in this folder, and let's just watch 05 run. So let me uh, change directories. And I need to go into 005, go run main. So here I printed out just 42. Okay, all I did is pass in 42 and it printed it out. All right, and there's the data. Just passed in one piece of data. And I did my template parsing inside of Funk init, which runs one time on the startup of the program. And so my templates are only going to be parsed once, and that's when I tell my program to run. Okay, so if I call it over and over and over, like TPL, give me this, TPL, give me that, every time I don't have to parse the files, I just do it once. So this is code for you to just kind of look at and try to figure out how all this stuff works, like template parse files returns a pointer to a template and an error. Template must takes a pointer to a template and error. And then it will either kill the program or give you back your pointer to a template, which you could store in a vari variable. So you can check the standard documentation. Just look how what this returns is what this asks for as an argument. So when this runs, it returns the exact two values that this wants. A value of type pointer to a template and a value of type error. Right? And then this will either die, kill the program, or store everything into a variable. And I had to store, I had to create var tpl from package template type template, and it's a pointer. I had to create that out here so that it could be accessible here and here because the scope is block scope, right? So I need it to be a package scope. All right, so then I execute it. So that's passing in one piece of data. Just doing a preview here of what you're going to learn over the week. And then the next template, next template is I created a variable. So exactly you know, the same as before. This, you know, template parse files, TPL go HTML, which is this one, right? Stored it in TPL, and then TPL execute template. I could have just done execute, but I specified the name of the template. If there is more than one template stored in TPL, execute template, I would need to specify the name of the template. If it's just one, I don't need that. I could just do execute and take out the template name. Since there's only one stored in my TPL variable, that will totally work. It's going to execute that one. But if I had more than one in there, got to have that. So now I'm passing in a string. That string has backticks. I'm, you can use backticks or double quotes for the string. And then I pass that in, and I'm saying, take that piece of data and assign it to a variable. You give it a dollar in front of the variable name, and then you could use that variable. So I just wanted to show, hey, you could create variables. And when we run this, all right, the meaning of life, release self-focus, embrace other focus. Pretty cool. So that's doing a variable. Take the data that's passed in, assign it to a variable. In 07, we start to work with data structures. So we already saw how a slice works. Right? There's my slice of sages. I pass in sages, and I range over them, and I print them out. So there's my right slice. We saw this range over this. The output of that each element becomes the input of this. Pretty cool. Yeah. You want to see it run? Anybody want to see it run? You're all good. What's your question? variable inside of the template, inside of the HTML thing? Yeah, the variable, you want to see how to... I want to know why um, the range 
Why can't you make the variable like store it inside of the insertion the point domain, like two stages? I actually I haven't finished the thing. So stages, stages is holding that array. Slices. Sages is holding the slice of string. Yeah. So it's a variable of type slice of string. We're getting there. And then pass in more stuff, right? We're getting there. So here I'm just assigning to uh, the current one. When you range over a slice, you get back the index and the element. The index being the position in the slice and then also the value of the slice. And so this is interesting, so I'll just show it. Uh, and we're in change 007 and 02. Hey, I'm in the wrong one. Change 01, 02, there we go. Is it like, is it like that um, array where it's zero? zero yeah, it's zero base, yeah. So you can see zero Gandhi, one MLK, two Buddha, which is kind of interesting. So that's the slice. Now we have a map. And so a map is a key value data structure. So I just made some keys and some values. So map with a key of string, type string, and a value of type string. So the key is India, the value is Gandhi, the key is America, the value is MLK, keys meditate, the value is Buddha. I'm going to pass that in, this map, and then I'm just going to range over it again. So I can range over a slice, I can range over a map, but a map is a different data structure, right? So I just wanted to show you slice versus map. Slice is for like a list of things. So is a map like an object? Uh, don't think object, it's just a map. It's a key value data structure. So MLK, Gandhi, Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad. It just prints out the values. If I go and put it into variables, right, I could get the keys too. So the keys looks like this. Right? Range over and assign the key and the value and then print it out. So it's just a map. We have a keep a list of things, keep key values. Then we have structs, and structs are uh, what you're looking for there, Gentry. So we create our own types. Goes pretty unique. You create your own type. There's a type that's an int. There's a type that's a string. There's a type that's bool. And in this program, there's now also a type which is sage. It's a type. Whoa. And it is of type. Uh, it is a struct. And so a struct is where we do fields. And so Sage has a name and a motto. And so then I could create a variable. It's going to be of type Sage. And I populate the fields. That's kind of like an object. Oh, that's an object. Kind of, well, don't use object so much in, in Go because so object comes with a lot of baggage. If what? You got another thing that wasn't a Buddha or a sage? Well. Would you do the standard out Buddha and then comma then other things? All right. So now you're asking like how do I pass in many different yeah, sages, multiple right? Multiple structures. Different things in sages. Cars. So here I have type sage, which has these fields. I'm going to create a Buddha. I'm going to create a Gandhi. I'm going to create an MLK. I'm going to create a Jesus. I've created all these variables, which are all of type sage all right and then i'm going to create a slice of sage slice of type sage and i'm going to store buddha gandhi mlk jesus muhammad i'm going to call it sages i'm going to pass those sages into my template and in my template i'm going to range over them the output of this, every time I range over this list of sage, the slice of sage, I'm going to get a sage, a Buddha. Well, when I get that, I'm going to have a field name, dot name, and a field dot motto. So when you refer to fields, it's dot and then the field name. 
So when I run this, this is 0704. Is that what you're looking for, Gentry? No. <laughs> what were you looking for? I mean, like, if I want to range over two completely different things. Like, dot is a thing that refers to sages, right? Is that how that's working? You're saying range, dot, and then the things that are inside that, whatever the thing is. You have os.standardout, comma, sages. So range is going to go over sages. Yeah. Well, what if I wanted to have different things I want to range over? So what data structure would you put those different things in to hold them all? A different type. Would you put them in a slice? What does a slice hold? Whatever I want it to. <laughs> Holds things of the same type. So a slice will be a slice of string or a slice of int. Or a slice of sage. I've created a type sage, and it's holding a slice of sage. Yeah, well, let's say I want to make a, a type of car, and then make that slice of cars with the different cars put out with their little variables that say like, oh, this is a Ford, whatever. And I want to pass in two, so then in my template I could have range car, you know, things about the car, range sage, things about the sage. Does that make sense? You want to pass in cars and sages? Yes. Okay, so how would you, what would you do? So we'd create another type of car with fields. So now we have a type sage, type car, and then we'd create variables of type sage and variables of type car. And then we basically have two lists, yeah. right? Because we'll have, you know, sage and we'll have car. And then this will be Pano test. I don't know. What's a Tesla? BMW. Yeah, but they're like, you know, models or something. Oh. Right? 528, 300D, Corolla, whatever. And then we'd have the make and all that stuff. And this would be Jetta. And then these would be cars. So how do we pass in sages, a slice of sages and a slice of cars? It's a good question. Is it just a comma and then cars? Oh, no, no, no. You have to put it all into one container. So what container would you use? A slice? Another slice? Or would it be a map? Would you stick them into a map? Well, a map holds what? A key and a value? Yeah, with a map, the key and the value have to be related. Yeah, right? So, yeah, so can it be a slice? Because there are different types. Could it be a map? Would it be a function? Maybe it'd be a struct. So we could create a struct, maybe. And so type, you know, data is a struct. And that struct has sages, S, sages. And that is of type sage. And it has cars. Oh, it's actually typed slice of, let's see, slice of uh, car. And this is a slice of sage. Slice of sage, right? And then we do D colon equal data. And we do uh, sages is equal to sages. And cars is equal to cars. D, and then we pass in, this needs to be like another example. We pass in uh, over here, we'd have this, right? And now we're, when we range, will we range over our, our thing again? No, but we could range over sages. And then we could range over cars.
And if we need to store those in variables and then mix and match, we can range over, put them in variables, and then stick those variables where we want them. It's not the most elegant templating right there. It's a little bit different than other models where you could just pass in a bunch of different stuff and then access it more easily. I don't care for that quite as much about Go. So that does take like some thinking in a way that we're not used to thinking as web developers or I'm not used to thinking of in that way. I'd rather just be able to pass in different chunks and call them where I want to call them. Yeah. And so it's a little bit clunky. You know, like, okay, now I have to assign them to variables over there in my template and then mix. if I want to mix and match sages and cars in my template, I have to first assign those to dollar sign variables and then put them in the places I want them or what, you know? But I'm just asking, so you, can, you can't uh, use like double dot notation there for referencing in the template then or not? Like if you wanted to range over that but not sages, you want to range over the whole thing? you reference them in the loop as dot sage or wait dot sages dot name something like that if I wanted like uh, well it's a slice so I need like you know to reference one of the data structures in the slice okay yeah I'm guessing the templating doesn't allow you I think it probably does. I just don't think I'm smart enough to understand it. Because it's like, it has this entire thing about, um, or I haven't figured out it, figured it all out yet. So, yeah. So you got to like loop through those little loops and then assign those to variables inside the other template? I'm not sure. Because if you could do that, you could just make another little template. File. Right, that file right. That's 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 where that's where it gets complex. Like if you look at their examples, you know they have some examples here which are just like, whoa, you know, like so. Here's one example that does, you know, the form letter basically. All right, dear Aunt Mildred, dear Uncle John, dear cousin, and it does a little bit of conditional logic, you know. So you pass in a slice of recipient, and here are your recipients. So name and gift are fields that are both strings, and attended is a bool, right? Here's the template right here. Dear name, if attended, this, else, it was a shame, end, with gift. So if they had a gift, dot gift, and these little things take away space. Thank you for the lovely, right? And then, you know, it adds the gift because that becomes what's next with gift. That's pretty cool, right? So if it has that. That's nice. That's cool. Right? This is my style of being lazy. Huh? This is my style of being lazy. Like, that's a nice example. And, okay, I can wrap my head around that. I got to work on understanding that. But then some of this stuff just gets like, like, whoa, right? Like, here's a... a Funk map somewhere in here. Is this the one funk map? But some of those get. So our goal in this class isn't to under. See here we have like a funk map and assigning a funk and then using the funk, which isn't too bad, but different ways and then pipelining right here. The output of one thing becomes the input of the next thing right in the template. So I think there's ways that. You know, if you uh, are Rob Pike, it's just totally obvious. Why don't people get it? But it seems like a lot of other people struggle trying to understand all this. I know some really talented people who have taken some look at some of the code that I've written for websites, and they're like, all right, I'm sticking with Ruby on Rails, you know? Cause it, Takes a little bit, but for me, it's like. So, Gentry, figure it out, baby. Come back and teach me next week. Teach all of us. So, that's a. Uh, I'm just gonna reset this stuff to where it was. Did you like that example? Yes. Yeah. With the two cars and thinking about the data structures. <laughs> 
All right, but then how do you combine them? That becomes the, the trick. And so, Gentry, I think you'll like these examples under 99. And uh, I want you guys to do, uh, well, I think with watching, what do, what do you want for next week? And then I think this is it for the video that you need to do.